Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Mr. Anderson, living in 90210 Beverly Hills. We got the W-2 income at 100000 12950 standard deduction, 87050 for the taxable income page. Number two, 14774 for the tax calculation, 15000 withheld. Bottom line, 226. Now we'll go back on over to page one. Our focus is on child and dependent care expenses. So let's first add a dependent, which will typically move someone up if they were a single filer to the head of household filer. We'll have the child tax credit, which is different than what we're talking about here, child and dependent care expenses. And then we'll jump into those items. Okay, so here we have it. Now we have added Joe Anderson as a son qualifies for the child tax credit we're going to be saying which is not our focus here it's similar name we're focused on the child independent care expenses but we'll see how the normal things kind of integrate together when you've got a child and so we're going to then say okay page one actually it should be head of household now okay i fixed it i fixed it so it's head of household now so now everything else is the same but the standard deductions at 19,400 get us, gets us to the 80,600 page number two. Then we have the tax at 11,855. And then we've got the uh, child tax credit. That's the one thing that has changed now. So now we're gonna tack on to that. The other benefit of possibly having the child is that you, you can have expenses related to the care of the child. So normally when we think about this from a, just a practical data input uh, standpoint, most software, you'll think about two kinds of sides to this. We're going to have one, the child that it, or that you're claiming the expenses for, and then we're going to have the institution that we're going to have to be claiming the, the expenses, whoever did the child care that we're going to need the, the number for. So let's first, I only have one dependent here, so it's pretty easy. We're going to say, yeah, it was for Joe Anderson here. And then uh, the qualified dependent care expenses. Let's put something over the threshold. It's going to cap it at 3,000. I'm going to go over the threshold for now so we can see that cap and go up to 5,000. And then the other side of things we need to do is the institution. So I'm going to, I just made up an institution here. So, uh, so what we need is the name of the institution, the address of the institution, and you need the institution's EIN number. If it is an institution, if it's an individual, then they might have the social security number. So that's the typical information you're going to need. Notice here that I'm populating as well the total amount paid to care provider in 2022. So because there's only one uh, dependent, it's pretty straightforward. It can get a little bit confusing when you have multiple dependents that are possibly are being taken care of, of, of by the same provider. So you can imagine, for example, having two kids and maybe we'll test that out shortly with the same care provider and so you paid five thousand each for each individual kid or something like that but let's start here for now so i'm going to go back on over and say okay obviously we're going to we're going to imagine that the care was provided to help uh to generate the to allow mr anderson here to work and because mr anderson is single you would think that the care provider would be you know more easy for to to fit that qualification although it does get a little bit confusing when you're talking about say uh it, what's the primary goal that you're sending the child for the care for is it for the care or for some you know other purpose like educational purpose or something like that but we're gonna we're just gonna practice the, the data input now so then on page number two page one is much the same page number two now you got this other six hundred dollars that's been pulled in from schedule three line eight so if we go to schedule three line eight here it is this is the credit for child independent care expenses from form two two i mean two four four one so we could go to form two four four one this is the child independent care expenses so we've got uh, the name up top uh, social security number and then here's the care provider's name. This is the person or organizations who provide the care. The address, the number, that's what the IRS typically wants. Was the care provider your household employee in 2022? In this case, we're saying no. The amount paid 
$5,000 we're saying. And obviously you wanna have the support for that in the event that you had an audit or something. You'd wanna be able to support that, that number. And then down here, you can see it's basically gonna be capped at 3,000 where it says, add the amount on column D to line two. Don't enter more than 3,000 if you had one qualifying person or 6,000 if you had two or more persons. So it's gonna be capped at 3,000 for one, 6,000 for two or more. Earned income is the 100,000 that's pulling in from uh, the form 1040. And then basically you can you can see they're taking the table down here. So it capped out at 3,000 and then they're taking the table, which is gonna take some fraction of the allowable credit, not 5,000 what we paid, but the cap in this case of the 3,000 is looking at this table to see that we're at the 100,000. So you can see obviously as the income goes up, it's gonna be uh, having a, a smaller number that's gonna be used and it's picking up the 43,000 and over the 20. So 3,000 times the 20% is the uh, 600. And uh, then we could have a limitation for the tax liability because I don't believe this is a, this is a uh, non-refundable, not a refundable credit. And that's what's pulling into the line three, which is pulling in to the first page of, I'm sorry, the second page of the form 1040. Now, obvious, now, the other thing to note here is that you do need to have uh, income for the calculation. So let's imagine you didn't have any earned income and you had some other source of income like interest or something maybe. So let's say earned income is, is gone. Well, then we're going to say then you might have had like interest income, like dividends or something. Interest income was 10000 let's say. 10,000 interest income and that's it. And then, so you can see now it's not calculating because you, you, we didn't have any income. And the point of the credit is that you had income and uh, and and the, the, the you're paying the expenses in order to generate income, but you didn't have any income and passive income doesn't really count, right? Even if I made the passive income 100,000, then uh, generally still, you, you may have the child tax credit uh, pops up here, but we don't see that $600 for the other credit because that's all passive income. Uh, it's not active income. It's not in this first section of the income, but down here in the passive area. All right, now let's imagine that you had a decent amount of income, 20,000, but still with the standard deduction at the 19,400, taxable income would only be at $600. So that would mean the tax is quite low at $61. And then you could see what, what we, we still have the calculation here, but it's being limited to the $61 right here, $61 from uh, schedule three. And then if I go to 2441, just to look at that calculation, we paid the 5,000, we have the $3,000 limit. And now you have a, a different rate that's being used because we didn't have as high of an income. So it would have been at the 960, but it capped it at the 61 because it's non-refundable, right? It's not taking the liability below zero. It's, it's, big, it's taking the tax being paid down to zero. Now it's kind of interesting, the interplay between a credit like this credit and the child tax credit, which, is, which has similar, uh, you know characteristics to it because the child's going to be involved with it and the child tax credit does have a refundable component to it so notice it basically allows you the uh the credit for child independent care and then the child tax credit you have the additional child tax credit which is the refundable portion of the child tax credit so some of these get a little bit messy when you think about the interplay between uh, the different credits, especially when you get into like refundable and non-refundable portions of the credits.